video we're going to talk a little bit about some of the physical requirements for microbial growth and in particular we're going to look at temperature and pH um, both of which are really determined by the way that temperature and pH affect proteins and in the ways that those affect proteins they end up affecting microbial growth as well and then we're going to look at osmolarity or the, uh, the movement of water, the concentration of dissolved substances around the cell and what some of those requirements are as well. Now when temperature increases, we see in this diagram from left to right, proteins we know denature. The various bonds that hold together the secondary and tertiary structure, even the quaternary structure of a protein, begin to come apart and once that starts happening, the protein stops functioning, right? So you don't have to completely unravel a protein for it to lose its function. In fact, it takes very little heat uh, to unravel just a little tiny bit of the protein for it to lose its function. So increasing temperature beyond the temperature optimum and our proteins begin to unfold and therefore microbial growth plummets really quickly. Same is true with changing pH, not necessarily increasing or decreasing, but both. Right? As pH uh, increases away from the optimum, as pH decreases away from the optimum for the proteins that are within that cell, then the, those, those proteins begin to misfold and the activity and the growth rate and metabolism of that cell all begin to drop off very quickly. And same is true to some degree for osmolarity, the concentration of various dissolved substances. On a graph like this, you could uh, draw the temperature requirements for the different types of microorganisms that, uh, that we encounter. So what you should do is take the time to draw on here psychotrophic bacteria. Uh, psychotroph, psychrophiles, those terms are honestly typically used interchangeably. Uh, mesophilic bacteria and then thermophilic bacteria. And the hyperthermophiles, as the name implies, uh, they, they have temperature optimal that are extremely high. But if you look at that temperature range down on the bottom, those psychrophiles can survive down to zero degrees Celsius or even below. Some of them will even continue to grow at temperatures below zero as long as they have liquid to move in. And you look how low the temperature optimum is, you know, 10, 12 degrees, something along those lines. Thermophiles at the other extreme tend to prefer very hot temperatures. Fortunately, most psychrophiles and most thermophiles are not pathogens. And so microorganisms that can survive in the refrigerator typically are not the ones that are going to make us sick. And microorganisms that can survive cooking are typically not the ones that are going to make us sick. But it's this middle category of mesophiles. These are where uh, most of our pathogens reside. So you see mesophiles have a temperature optimum right around 37 degrees Celsius right at our core body temperature, lucky them. And the other thing I'd point out, and we looked at something uh, like this when we talked about enzyme activity, is that to the left, so on the cold side of the temperature optimum, you see how slow and gradual the activity increases until you hit the temperature optimum. So if you look at your mesophiles in the middle there, for example, down at 10 degrees Celsius, your average mesophile isn't budging. By the time you're at 20, you're starting to get some activity. At 30, you're getting more activity. And at 37, you're getting optimal activity, metabolism, and growth. But then when you move to the right, you move to the hot side of the temperature optimum, you see that it, it drops off very, very quickly. Within just a couple degrees, from 37 down to 40, all of a sudden, or up to 40, pardon me, all of a sudden you've lost a lot of your, your activity. And by the time you hit only 50 degrees, uh, even less than 50 degrees, maybe 47 or so, there's nothing left to give. And that's because on the cold side, uh, our proteins typically do fold properly, but um, we're just, we have fewer and fewer collisions, fewer and fewer um, opportunities for enzymes to carry out their various metabolic processes, and metabolism ultimately uh, controls the, the rate of growth of the bacteria. To the right, however, we begin, the right of our, our temperature optimum, we begin overheating our poor little guys and uh, denaturing proteins. And as soon as those proteins begin to denature, our growth rate plummets and pretty quickly we do irreversible damage. <clears throat> now there are no known pathogens among the thermophiles, but there's one really important pathogen among those psychrophiles, something that likes to grow on some of our foods in the refrigerator. Um, usually we think of the fridge as 
kind of protecting our food, putting any microbial growth into sort of a pause. Uh, but if you look down in the psychrophiles, you see that they're doing just fine at refrigeration temperature of four or five degrees Celsius. I want you to, on your own time, look up what pathogen is really important, what foodborne pathogen is really important that can still grow in our refrigerators. Same thing is true with pH. So we have acidophiles, we have neutrophiles, and we have alkalinophiles, sometimes called alkalophiles. You should draw on a graph like this the growth rate curves as a function of pH for each of these three categories. Now in this case, because, um, because uh, two acidic conditions and two alkaline conditions have essentially the same effect on the way proteins fold, these curves are actually symmetrical around their optimum as opposed to the temperature curves which we saw were asymmetrical around the optimum. And among these three, there are very few pathogens that are acidophilic, very few pathogens that are alkalinophilic. The vast majority of them are going to be neutrophilic, and that shouldn't surprise you since most of our tissues are in fact neutral. So I won't go through these three curves, but you should take the time to actually draw these out. Uh, add units to the pH scale on the bottom on the x-axis, and make sure this makes sense to you. And then finally, osmolarity requirements. <clears throat> there are three different types of solutions a bacterial cell could find itself in. It could find itself in a solution that has a very high concentration of dissolved substances, even greater dissolved substances outside the cell than inside the cell. You can have the flip-flop where you get a very dilute solution like uh, purified water that a bacterium finds itself in. Or you can have one where the concentration of dissolved substances outside the cell matches that inside the cell. And there are three different terms for each of these. If a cell finds itself in a hypertonic solution, a solution that has greater dissolved substances than what's inside the cell, then by osmosis, water will leave the cell in a rather vain attempt to dilute out its surroundings. Remember, the goal is to bring things to equilibrium. So it would lose water to the surroundings, trying to bring things to equilibrium, and in the process, the cell would crenate, meaning it would crush in on itself and collapse. Uh, typically, the damage from crenation is going to be irreversible. Uh, on the far right side of the screen, you see a hypotonic solution. Hypo means below or lower, like a hypodermic needle. So in this case, we've got a solution that has a lower concentration of dissolved substances than what's inside the cell. And in this case, water is going to move into the cell, attempting to come to equilibrium and dilute it out. What may happen, depending on the structure of the cell wall and the, the gradient, essentially, the difference in dissolved substances on either side, is that the cell will swell and possibly even burst. We call that lysis. And then we have an isotonic situation, iso meaning same, where the concentration is the same inside the cells, outside the cell, and you'll have no net movement of water, but for every one water molecule that moves into the cell, one will move out, and you'll have uh, an equilibrium across the two. So those are um, some of the more important factors, physical factors, that can control microbial growth temperature, pH, and osmolarity. Make sure that you work through those, and let me know if you have any questions at all.